Hello Title III community, it's Matthias and Benny. And today we want to talk to you about rich text editor configuration. Stay tuned. So in version 8, we introduced CK Editor as the new rich text editor that you can use in your Type 3 installations. We superseded HTML area, which was old. I think this is the most let's diplomatic let's term. Just call it old. Yeah, it was old. Um, and configuring it was a bitch, and it was it was hard to use. It was no longer working properly on um, mobile devices. It was slow. It had a lot of issues. So we replaced that with the CK editor. But not only that we also added a new way of configuring it. How? Well, um, in previous versions, we only had uh, the PageTS config configuration available. Uh, we now have um, an, a new YAML configuration in place. Okay. That makes it a bit easier. It's easier to understand. No such wrapping around. It's mainly straightforward. Uh, we can now provide different presets for the whole instance, that, had, that means that it's now also possible to provide multiple configurations for a single instance. That means my, my news extensions or my, my blog or my text element can now have different configurations for their rich text editor component. So we define a preset yep. and then apply that preset to different rich text fields, so say in your news extension or your calendar extension, these could use different configurations other than the standard body text field, for example. Yeah, but, but the really important st thing here is that you can do this. You don't need to. You have also the option to provide a global configuration and just let every field use the same configuration. So you don't need to provide an extra configuration for each field, but you can. Okay, so let's dive into how configuration works. So what we see here is the xlocalconf of the bootstrap package. Um, and what we can read from here is that you have a new preset that you call bootstrap. Yeah. And you're loading bootstrap YAML. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a look at what bootstrap YAML is in a sec. But why do you have your own preset registered? Um, I have my own preset registered because I, I don't know where the bootstrap package is used later on. So if another extension also ships a new default configuration, um, we would have been in a bit of trouble because we, we don't know which is loaded now. So I'm a bit more explicit about that. So I'm, I'm not interfering with, with, with any other configuration that comes into place. Okay. Except they're also calling it bootstrap and then we have a different problem. Fair enough. So this is sort of a namespace yeah. for the configuration. Okay. Um, we got another example below that, and I just comment this one out. And this would basically override the default configuration. Yeah. This means if you register your own rich text editor configuration on default level, mm -hmm. this would be applied to the entire Type 3 installation, regardless of page trees, fields, it would just be loaded at any time. Yeah. The basic default configuration for all fields that will be delivered by Type 3 default is named default. There's a lot of defaults now. Fair enough. Um, but it's just called default. So um, it will be all immediately present in all your rich text fields in the backend, and you have nothing else to do. Nice. So now that we know what, how we can register a preset, how do we apply presets to different fields? There are two options. One option, you can do it in TCA directly. We skip that option um, because, because it's, not, it's not a normal use case that someone really overrides TCA just to apply the configuration. Um, it's just too, yeah. too hard to do. Uh, so we would just use tsconfig as before, okay, so but we, we now don't have any um, of our rendering options in tsconfig, but we only apply the configuration. Okay, so we go into the configuration folder yeah. Page TS. Page TS, and then open the rte.txt yeah. file. Yeah. So what, what do we see here? What we now see, we see the RTE config for, at first, TD content, the body text field. That's the main 
text area you see in the whole backend. That's always just the same field. And we, we now go to and uh, apply the present for different types. That means if someone is added um, a new content element with a different type, the, the configuration is not automatically applied to that field. Only if we explicit call it th that way. Okay. Yeah. So this is so the body text type text. This is C type, right? This is a C type, yeah. exactly. This gets loaded with the preset bootstrap and all the other fields do as well. So down here yeah. at the bottom, we have different things. What are these? Um, these are custom records um, we use for um, the, the top slider we have or the accordions um, or the top items that also have an enrichx component. Um, these are also, also loading these um, presets. They are not stored in TT content. As you can see, we are now referring to bootstrap package accordion item. When you scroll up to the top, you will see that we, they are referring to TD content, the main storage yeah. for content elements. Okay, so since this is page TS config, we can apply this on a per tree basis, correct? Per tree basis, per page basis, whatever we decide. But it's always pages and sub pages, right? Pages this and is, sub pages. This is important yeah. to remember. That is, all, if you apply TS config, it'll always be applied to the page and all child pages of that page. So nice. So now we can take a look at how the actual configuration looks like. Yeah, we can do that. But we can also mention um, that what we're doing now here is the, comp the type configuration per, per C type. So the wheel of the preset, but we can also define a new default preset for the whole instance by TS config without overriding the global configuration uh, before. Okay, so this is the comment at the bottom here, yeah. right? So what you do here is that you basically go to rte.default.preset yeah. and then say my bootstrap package configuration is now the new default preset. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So being right there, I just spotted a typo in xlocalconf. This should be lowercase then, right? Yeah. Okay. Good we spotted that one. Okay. So next up, we're going to take a look at the configuration YAML file. So what we're looking at here is the bootstrap YAML file, the configuration. This is just plain standard YAML, mm -hmm. although I see something that I don't know yet. Up on top right here, we have an import section. What's this about? Well, the new configuration is completely split it, so that you can really use single components you want to use and only import the stuff that for your configuration is necessary. So this works like imports in C Sharp, for example. It's exactly. like, an, like an include in PHP. Yeah. Nice. But in that case, um, we did a wrapper around that. So we can, can load a different YAML file that just exists the, the current YAML configuration. So we have it a bit more extendable. These could also come from different extensions, right? Right. That's As you smart. can see, the current config configuration comes from um, this RTE CK editor extension. Well, that's a core extension. But it could also come from news extension, bootstrap package, grid elements, whatever you want okay. to load. That's clever. Um, in general, the YAML configuration, it's just new lines indented by two spaces. That's standard YAML syntax, yeah. nothing new to it. So on the next line, you're loading the RTE min CSS. Yeah. Is this mandatory or can we omit that? Depends if you want to see that custom size is applied. Because when you let us load new style sets like button stylings or link stylings, you some kind of want to have the editor see you change and what he configures. All right, but the old rich text editor needed the CSS file to apply the link classes. I think the new one doesn't need that. Cool. It's just ignoring it because it's just for styling purposes. Which makes sense, because yeah. it, it, in the end, it's what you see is what you get editor. So if you're not seeing what you will be getting, what's the point? It's not connected anymore. Nice. So tell us a bit about the style sets you added here. OK, we, from the bootstrap package, we, we just pro provide very basic stuff. That means the standard stuff you're getting used from bootstrap, that's the lead element for some kind of bigger 
paragraphs, um, some table stylings you want to add for hover effects, highlighting single columns, um, or just put a button inside. Okay. So, so if we dissect what's, what's actually, because these mm -hmm. all do the same, right? Yeah. Just applying different things. So if we take a look at the lead style set, mm -hmm. so this will be a style that can be applied to paragraph tags and you apply the attribute class with the value lead in this case. Yep. So does this mean that I can, I can apply different attributes as well? So say data attributes? I think that's possible, yes. That's the idea about the whole attribute section. It's not nice. limited to, to classes. It, you can also set IDs, whatever you want to set there. It's just possible. That's smart. Okay, I mean, this is, this is rather plain and, and, and simple, so we can just close this down. And the next part, you have toolbar groups. What are these? Well, the whole configuration or the interface you will see um, when you open the RichX component is split in some, some groups, let's say. You have some for styling, some for aligning, some for show source code, okay. editing, inverting, and that are just the toolbar groups we are now um, applying. And we also configure what fields we want to see in that groups. Now, for example, uh, in the editing group, just spell checker is active. Okay, so if we switch over to our Type 3 backend and just open up a record, these are these groups. Yeah. right here. So what we can see here is that we have a different style applied to this block yet, right? So this is a lead block, mm -hmm. which is no longer centered. So we want to have it like this. And down here we have, we have button styles for links. Yeah, exactly. So I can now select success and it'll go green. I hope so. It worked. So um, what you're supplying is a lot of this helper methods that the bootstrap framework mm -hmm. well is shipped with, and you apply these to the rich text configuration so that editors can use it to set buttons, etc. Exactly. We're also shipping the very basic configuration. That means all the customizations you're doing in your front end, let's say, say you're shipping or uh, changing colors, we are not showing that in the back end. We're just showing a representation of what's happening in the front end. Although you could have, if you change the colors around, so from, from blue to orange, um, you would basically have to supply yet another build job to build the custom CSS for the rich text editor. If you have a full-blown custom CSS build process and you have minified files or maybe want to provide a, a, a more minified version for the rich text component, you can just assign it. Okay, that's smart. So if we go back to the configuration, these are format tags. So these are tags you allow to be selected for block level elements? Yeah. Okay, so say if you don't want H4 and H5 in your installation, you mm -hmm. can now supply this. Yeah, just remove it. This is clever. So the other stuff, you removed the underline and the strike through buttons, mm -hmm. apparently. You removed the image plugin, yeah. which I like, because images shouldn't be pasted just in there. Um, and the justify, that's the, the justification of the content, right? Yeah. Just exactly. Justify just means text alignment in that case. I mean, text left, text right, text center, text justified. Okay. That are these elements. This is this is pretty straightforward, right? I mean, these are these are not even sixty lines of configuration. I recall the old rich text editor configuration spanning over hundreds of lines of code. Yeah. Um, you don't need to to load them all. As you've seen, on on top of the configuration, we are loading some presets. That means all the previous necessary configuration, like processing, the editor base configuration, like plug-in plug pre-configuration, that's also, that is now so, con so modular, so we can just reuse it without needing to apply, well, to customize it to our own needs, yeah. because it understands um, the editor configuration for the rest we are applying. Okay, 
Well, this is interesting because normally when people ask about rich text editor configuration, the, the blog posts get really, really lengthy. And this seems to be very simple and easy to understand and straightforward. So that was, I guess, the intention behind the change. Yeah, for example, the, the migration from RTE HTML area to the new CK editor took about two hours without, I had no idea what to do. I didn't follow the development process. So I, I've just read the docs and had a look, okay, how we, do we need to configure it? If we now compare it to the time I've spent from Tapestry 6.2 to Tapestry 3, 6, 7.6, um, I put roughly around four weeks into RTE configuration and it never really worked correctly. Okay, so and this was basically like it just a, works. a tenth it, of the amount. It's just, it just works, really. Okay. So, on a scale of one to ten, how happy are you with the new Rich Text Editor configuration? I'm really happy. So, I then like a ten, I guess. Yeah, more like a twelve. Or <laughs> All right. So, there you have it. Rich Text Editor configuration. It's really, really simple. It's, it's modular. You can reuse your things. Um, go ahead, make the backend more usable for your editors so they can build better sites, I guess. So, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, recommendations, leave a comment below. We'll get back to you and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Bye.